What up, players? It's Wallboss here with this bird. I haven't done a tutorial in a long time, so that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna get started on our Games Workshop Eldar Death Jester model. I'm copying the Warhammer product page version, so that's kind of what he looks like. And um, in order to get to where we are today with this, you're gonna need the following paints. Rackheart Flesh for the bone. Seraphim Sepia and Agrax Earthshade to shade the bone. Stegadon Scale Green for all of the highlights on the black, as well as Celestial Gray for the highlights. For the metals, you're going to need Lead Belcher and Mithril Silver or Rune Fang Steel. Corn Red and Mephiston Red for the gem. For the, for the blue gems, you're going to need Stegadon Scale Green as well as Siltek Green and Temple Guard Blue. And is there anything I'm missing? Celestial Gray for the pant leg and oh yeah, Averlin Sunset for the yellow for the yellow insignia there on his jacket. And yeah, this is as far as we get with the model today. Hope you guys like it and stay tuned for the checkered pattern tutorial which we're gonna do on his left leg in the next video. Latest players! Hey everybody, we are going to start now with our death jester here and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take, stick it on scale green and we are going to start painting up some highlights on this guy's robes. So I've got the Games Workshop um, product page here on my phone, so I'm going to be referencing it a lot. So... Second on Scale Green is a great color to be painting your models anything that is a black cloth it's a great color to highlight to show a little bit of um, you know the, the light reflecting off of it so we're just gonna look right now to see where where is the light reflect the most off of and let's go from there so you want to brush with a good a good edge very good tip, I mean. And oh, obviously, of course, the first thing you want to do is prime your model for this one because this guy is in mostly all black, like his, because of his trench coat. I obviously primed him in black. And most modeling or hobby stores have black primer they should. You want a flat black, this one is kind of glossy. It's very much akin to the, the Games Workshop uh, Chaos Black. There's no 360 view of this guy, so unfortunately I'm gonna have to do a lot of guesswork for what the back is gonna look like. But you'll also notice if you're looking if you're looking at this figure that besides the blue there's also gray highlights. So they kind of break it up. They only don't they don't only do this kind of dark dark turquoise, but they also do gray, so you're gonna be getting out your colors in just a bit. And you can also see that they highlight the front of his little shoesies here. like in a V up to his toe. There's that side. All right, so now you're gonna be getting your Celestra Gray. You could also get um, a darker gray if you want, but I'm just gonna go 
nice and light with this. And I'm gonna try and hit all the outlines of his of his trench coat. seem my outlines are pretty sloppy and messy and the way to work around that especially for new painters and this is something that I learned in the beginning was you just take your black which is in my case chaos black or you can use Abaddon black and all you do is you paint inside your mistakes so that you leave the the highlight color on the edge It looks like, from looking at this uh, product picture, the Stegadon screen, uh, scale green is also used for this guy's um, weapon. Yeah. And there's also some blue gems on his giant scythe weapon too so we'll mark those out right now with our stegadon scale green just gonna go in and mark out these blue gems here and now we're also going to highlight the edge edge of the casing there. Having done a whole month of, um, what do you call them? Dread Fleet, I feel like this is so easy to do now. I'm also gonna be painting the little back area here. you can do. Start with one highlight like here for example the Stegadon scale green. It gives a very like leathery look I think like black leather. It has this sort of bluish highlight color to it and then go back over and on top of the blue the Stegadon scale green rather you're gonna paint your Celestra gray. edges there. go back over just like we did before with our black paint and paint from the middle to the highlight colors here at the edge. We 
can see by doing this we clean up the clean up the outlines. So this model that I'm using is metal, but I believe they have it out in fine cast now. I'm not really a fan of the fine cast, but it would be a lot lighter than this model is. This model has some weight to it, so if I drop it, which I don't want to do, then um, you know it could have some consequence. You could, for example, bend the uh, bend some parts of the model, warp it out of place. I did that once with the, I don't remember what model it was, but I, I dropped it and um, the weapon bent at a really bad angle. It was like a lance or something, and it never quite fixed itself, fortunately. So again, I'm just using Stegadon Scale Green to highlight the edges here. Right here too. We're also going to take Rekarth Flesh and paint in the bone areas of the model. So the rib cage and the skull mask that this guy is wearing. So this is a commission job for a friend of mine, and I don't really, I don't play Eldar, I don't, I think I have the, the book, the codex, I, I picked it up a long time ago as a, to use as a source of inspiration, to look at color schemes, and this is back before you were really able to find a lot of examples of the uh, models online, so you just kind of have to rely on literature, and um, yeah, the Harlequins really just stick out as just being so such great models to paint. They really stretch your stretch your creativity with all of the checkered patterns that you have to do, and um, just the intricacy of the details and the designs. It's really a good challenge for any painter of any skill level. Alright, so there are some silver parts, so let's get those out of the way. Uh, you've got, um, if you could get your lead belcher out, this is our base silver. And for the Games Workshop, model as well, the example model, the um, base is painted in silver, but my client said uh, he's going to do his own basing, so don't paint any of the base work, just paint the models. So that's what I'm going to do. So this little silver piece on the end of, not even sure what that is, power source, I think. Looks like the little ammo, ammo feed there, and his trigger is also silver. He's wearing a ruby in his belt, so we're gonna paint that with corn red. There. 
to start with, we'll keep painting, painting that up. I'm trying. I'm, I'm looking at this model on the Games Workshop website, and I'm having a hard time figuring out what parts or like what is the reasoning for some of the black areas on the on the trench coat to be highlighted with gray, and some of it to be highlighted in this blue. Doesn't really seem to follow any rhyme or reason because I'm just noticing now more areas to be highlighted. They all kind of follow different. Like colored patterns. This part over here is actually gray. Uh, who knows? Here we're gonna take Avalon Sunset and paint in the little Eldar crest on his uh, jacket there. Looks like a. It's kind of like a spade. Then it's got an Eldar rune here as well. You're doing fine, intricate, embossed work. Like this, where the pattern is sculpted onto the model, but it's very small. You just want a little bit of brush, uh, paint on the tip of your brush, and you just want to lightly, lightly paint it over. Okay, so after our bone has had a little while to dry now, we are going to take Seraphim Sepia, and we're going to wash of the bone area. It's really important you wait until the bone is dry, the Recarth flesh is dry before you do this, otherwise the shade is going to mix in with your base color and it's not going not gonna to look good. Okay, and next we're going to do a little bit more highlighting with Stegadon Scale Green. Looks like they also painted these little tabs on his arms. As a disclaimer too, I think this model was already glued together before I got it. So that's why some of the pieces look a little... Like this. I think it was. Oh, I don't know. I, I don't even know actually. It's been so long since I... Looked at this model thinking I was going to paint them up. Okay, then we're going to take Balthazar Gold and we're going to paint the little gold fetishes on the edges of his little, just their outfit. For example, up here. And all of these ones down here at the bottom of his coat. You okay? Oh. <laughs> I'll be right back. Okay, while we're waiting for that, we're going to take Snowtech Green and we're going to start highlighting up the gemstones. It's never gonna it's never gonna replace hot turquoise, but Sotek Green is still a nice. It's a nice hot, hot turquoise substitute. I'll never fully accept it, I think, but it's because the old hot turquoise was so cool. Okay, and then we're gonna take. I'm 
Runefang Steel, I think, is the new Mithril Silver, but I don't have that here. I have the old Mithril, Mithril Silver, so it's basically whatever your brightest silver paint that you can find. I'm going to take that and we're going to paint the studs, as well as highlight all of the silver areas. So we'll do that first. You look for these studs on our jester's cloak here. By now, the from Sepia should be just about dry, so we're going to take next some Agrax Earthshade. If I can find it. There we go. And we're going to paint in the deeper, darker areas of the bone colored. So the ribs, the uh, mouth grill part. Recesses or the folds of where the skull mask is most curvy. You don't want to get too deep in there, but you do like want it to be to sit very nicely in all the grooves and all the hollows. Next, you're going to take Temple Guard Blue, and this is going to be the final highlight of our blue gems. So we're kind of going to aim for the lower parts. See what I'm doing this time. So you might get a little streaky effect, streaky deaky, and if you do, just let it dry. Curse the Games Workshop, Paint Gods, and let it dry. The worst thing to do is just get more paint and slap that on because you wanna you want as little bit as little amount of paint as you can get. Oh, 
on your work area. The more paint you have, if I just slapped on another thick coat of Celestial Grey just to cover up all the streaks here, then when I am drawing the pattern in with my Micron Arts pen, it might not stick. So I'm going to leave this here, let this dry, and uh, you, if you want to follow my checkered pattern tutorial, then um, stay tuned for that. If not, then um, take a break, let all this paint dry, and we'll come back to finish off this Eldar Death Jester with the highlights and the final touches like gloss varnishing, all the gems, making it look really nice and shiny in just a little bit. Latest play.